This episode of the YN Crew Podcast is brought to you by Times Cineplex. Hey, welcome back everyone to yet another episode of the Wine Crew Podcast. It's me, Kev, as usual on this podcast where we talk to you about all these movies, especially movies that are playing here in Brunei, Darussalam. First up, it's my co-host. He's back. It's Tibi. Hey. What's up? It's such a sleepy weekend. It is. It's, it's been a bit, I would say, serene and sublime. No, open house after open house. Yes. And eating is the main game this week. Yeah. How many houses did you go to today? Today only two, but we stayed there for a long time. <laughs> I think you got a medal for staying there for the longest. Yeah. All right. Up next is that the co-host of the podcast. It's Kai. Sup, guys. How's it going? <laughs> Everyone sort of just, sup, guys. Yeah, it's very mellowed right now. Very, very mellowed. I just found out that Brunei has squirrels. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've gone the last 28 years without knowing that. How did you not know this? I uh, Never seen a squirrel. I've never seen a squirrel. And I got so mind blown today when I went to an open house and my friend was like, yeah, so we we, uh, we protect this tree from squirrels. I'm like, that'll be funny if there's squirrels in the country. And he goes, what are you talking about? Like, we get them every day. <laughs> <laughs> and this really cheapens my experience because when I first went to California a couple of years ago, I saw a squirrel and I started videoing it because I'd never seen one before. <laughs> Turns out they're right next door to my house. So in your backyard, it possibly, yeah, yeah. literally, it's yeah. like going to Malaysia and then going to a tour guide. It's like this is the proboscis monkey from Sabah. Yeah, we have that every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's in hard. Brunei. In Brunei, they're pests. Yeah. yeah. It's, go go. It's a tragedy. <laughs> it's a tragedy. All right. This week we will be giving you a review of Men in Black International, which is the new movie with a whole new uh, set of cast members continuing the franchise that was kicked off back in 1995 by. Five? I think it was 1995. Yeah. Seven. No? Wait, I can't remember now. No, it's 97. I'm sorry. Those, those period. Yeah, yeah, those period. Yeah. Anyway, 97, <laughs> 97, 98. Mm. It was like Independence Day and then yes. Men in Black. Yeah. Right. Okay. Shall we just, shall we just do a do-over? <laughs> Uh, no, I think it's no, funnier if you. Fine. Yeah, I think it's funnier if keep you keep it at it. Yeah, fine. All right, fake it till you make it. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the first bit of the show, which is the news. We got a trailer this week for this movie, which looks like it could be really, really good. It's the sequel to The Shining. It's called Doctor Sleep. Oof. Stars Ewan McGregor as uh, the young boy in The Shining, the son. And, and this is just a creepy, creepy movie. We had a conversation about this off the air. And it was about whether or not Stephen King was okay with Stanley Kubrick's adaptation now of his novel. Because there are, I, I guess, scenes? No, 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 not scenes. but I think entire sequences. Entire sequences? Entire sequences so? that were changed. Uh, because what Stanley Kubrick... So The Shining is the hallmark horror movie because I don't know if you guys ever caught it. There is no jump scare in The Shining. None. And so how is it scary? Because I've never watched it's, The uh, it's, It uses the tension of closed inside a singular environment, which everything's is the hotel. A, everything's a slow burn. Yeah. Yeah. So The Shining is a hallmark of horror cinema and it's held by cinephiles as a standard of performance because Jack Nicholson, who plays Jack Torrance, goes like full 360 by the end of the film. Um, Stanley Kubrick's favorite part of the book was the concept. He didn't care about the lead up to it. He just liked the gist of it. And that was Stephen King's problem. And he just went, you know, this isn't what I wanted. Like, I wanted the world that I created. And so he executive produced a two-part TV show called The Shining. Which came out in the 80s. Which came out in the 80s as a response to that. It was not actually good. No. And then he wrote a book called Dr. Sleep a couple of years ago, actually, five or six years ago, I think. And the director of this movie, uh, Dr. Sleep, I'm forgetting his name, really went out of his way to kind of take Kubrick Shining, Stephen King Shining, and Dr. Sleep and try to meld everything together. So you kind of have an amalgamation in this one. And I read an article as well that I guess Stephen King now has sort of made peace with it because they are going to be using whole sequences as you mentioned yeah. and one of which is the scene of the blood gushing out of the of elevator, the elevator yeah. they're actually going to be using Kubrick's shots actual for footage that. Yeah, yeah exactly. the rest of the footage is recreated okay looks like it could be good I'll watch I, it I, I'm I mean, excited I, I hate her, I mean I don't hate it. I just don't love it as much but after watching the trailer, it's Ewan McGregor, and I really like him, and the trailer looks good. So and he's not like been it. in a lead role. Like, he's not that often in lead roles right now, because the last one I saw him in was Christopher Robin. Yep. And that was like a... I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was like a... It, I guess it was a kid's movie. Did you not like it? <laughs> it's not that I didn't like it. Yeah. I was like, okay, I, I'm finding it very hard to believe this. Right, now I loved it. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm excited for this, uh, Dr. Sleep. Sure. A couple of weeks ago, we gave you a review of Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and uh, reviews are mixed. 
But what is for sure is that it's not doing very well financially. And this has led some people to sort of question like, you know, how, where, where are they going to take this in the future? And what has come out is that the director of Kong vs. Godzilla, which is set to come out next year, mm-hmm. or, he says that they may delay it to make sure that it's good. As in, they don't want to risk it. They they don't yeah, want to sure, fine. ham Do fist it and rush it. But they'd rather just, you know what? We'll listen to the fans a little bit more. And then we'll maybe do a couple of scenes. Is uh, there any other giant monster movie coming out next year apart from... Uh, Jurassic World. But that's not monster. No. It's a creature feature, but it's not a monster film. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, now I, I wish there was a third Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim 3? Yeah, because... Yeah, I like I said I like the second one. <laughs> like like I said, we should encourage them to do a mashup. Yes. Godzilla yeah. versus Kong versus Jaeger. Yeah, and then Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reference this week. <laughs> Birds of Prey, which is a movie coming out from Warner Brothers. Apparently it has the lowest budget so far for a DCEU movie, standing at only about seventy five million dollars. And this movie only seventy five million. Yeah. <laughs> Love and, like and, this movie, <laughs> and this movie is actually going through a production company that's set up by Margot Robbie herself. Yeah, she apparently feels uh, protective of Harley Quinn. Like and she really connects with the character yeah. to the point where now she's actually saying that, don't worry, this version of Harley Quinn is going to be less male gazy. Not like in Suicide Squad yeah. where she was wearing super, super skimpy yeah. tights and shorts. And, you know, uh, some of the production photos came out and she's wearing long pants. I'm like, all right. So this is really going to be a character thing now. And I think uh, somebody said that it's actually meant to be like an indie movie. It's supposed to feel like an indie movie. So it's not as polished, maybe? Yeah. Hmm. So it's probably a bit more raw. A bit raw. What would that mean for like the story? Would they try and keep it like a... I think it won't have large action sequences. I think it'll just be like the chemistry between the th- these three female characters, which I think is what drives the books in the first place. Because the Birds of Prey comics was more about the banter between them than like saving Gotham. Okay. So this could be a new take or an, I guess a new vein in the DCEU. Yeah. Something a bit more character driven. Not just spectacle <laughs> yes. as, as what it's been yeah. ever since Man of Steel. It's just like, oh, look at this big action yeah, piece. Yeah, just look at this action sequence. And look, yeah. it's like they're fighting and they're breaking buildings yeah. and and it hasn't changed. Not really. No, even the like, up and... Except for Shazam felt a bit more dialed down. A little bit dialed down. Yeah, but like Aquaman was like underwater war what, wonder woman was the uh, yeah. the end sequence especially yeah. okay all right now we've all watched avengers endgame and it's already broken so many so many so many records only one record still stands which is the biggest <laughs> grossing movie of all time mm. it, it's not gonna get there you know <laughs> it's not gonna get there can i just say that <laughs> after 11 years and conquering the box office like for the last what four, four to five years 22 almost universally acclaimed movies. They still can't touch <laughs> a single movie about blue people. <laughs> they're $50 million away, but I, I don't think they're going to do it. Gonna nah, do it. Anyway, so. the story is not about that. The story is about this one Marvel superfan who has watched Avengers Endgame 103 and times. 110. Oh, he's up now. To he's 110. up to 110. Yes. Why? So he's broken the record he and watched he's gone that beyond. last seven times in the same day. No. Yes. That's yes. 21 hours. Yes. He has gone 110. Dear Lord, why? What, yeah. What's his object? What, what is he trying to do? He's prove? in the Guinness Book of World Records yeah. for watching a movie the most times in the cinema. He was tied with the highest ever at 103. Yeah, for Infinity War. Yeah, for the, the, the other guy. Because he didn't want to watch it for another one more time. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> I don't want to round it off to 104. <laughs> So now he's at 110, and is he still going, or has he called it quits? He, for now, has got... So, obviously, I'm sure, you know, there's some sort of, like, oh, I cannot wait to get invited on a set, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't do it without expecting something in return, so... Like, give me an omaze kind of situation. Yeah, right yeah, here. you know, I want to attend the red carpet for the next one. Would you or... do it? Would you watch Avengers Endgame? Not Endgame. Not, like, a, not 103 I, times. I love Endgame, but if there was a movie in history that I would have broken a record for, it's The Force Awakens. Because I watched that 16 times in the cinema. I watched Jurassic Park, I think, maybe five or six times, the original one. The first one? And then I don't know how many times at home. Right. Like, right. it was on repeat. Yeah. I, I wore the tape out. I nice. never watched anything more than three times in the cinema. Yeah, Force Awakens is, like, 16 times. That's my record. I can't beat that. Okay. 
You can try for the next one. If it's that good, yeah. <laughs> right. Ghostbusters, which is set to get a new sequel next year, directed by Jason Reitman, the son of the original director. He and the father recently revealed lost footage from the original movie. Hmm. And this was at a Ghostbusters convention kind of thing, and they had a panel. And they said, look, we actually came across these uh, new footage, which is not used in the film, and uh, it's for everyone to see now. It's up on YouTube It's just minor stuff like, oh, it was an extra scene here, an extra scene there. New old footage. New old footage. It's like finding new old money like in your pocket after you put it through laundry. Yeah, that's fair. And you're like, oh, yes. But I I, I wouldn't doubt it, right? A lot of footage gets cut. A lot of footage gets cut. But I think they were under the belief that everything was sort of archived and destroyed and that was it. And then they went, oh, actually, look, there's this other storage unit here. Let's go through that. Hang on a minute. We shot all this. Yeah. Okay. The Division, which is a game that came yep. out, I think, two years ago. Two, and then, three years, maybe. And then this year, they had a sequel. Uh, a yeah, sequel. Division 2. Division 2. And it's about like a smallpox epidemic that has yeah, closed off. Yeah, post-apocalyptic like, world. Certain you know. boroughs of New York and all yeah. that. Netflix has acquired the rights to make a movie. I, uh, I don't know. Is this Tom Clancy's? It no, is, no. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, it is, is Tom Clancy's. Clancy's. There's Jake no Gyllenhaal and Jessica Chastain. That's right. There's no story to be told. The thing I think Netflix is hoping on is the brand. Yeah, just to carry that. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of like them buying like a Call of Duty movie. Oh, I would never watch a Call of Duty movie. I mean, no. yeah, but you know, they just want the name. Yeah. Call of Duty. <laughs> It'd be such a bad film. It probably have nothing to do with the game. No, the captain will live for three films. <laughs> wow. Soap. Soap will come back. <laughs> Soap. Yeah. Is he back? No, I don't, no, he's I not don't back. think so. I'm just saying he will Soap come died. back. Yeah. Soap died. Yeah, Soap died in two. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Captain Price lived till the Infinity Warfare, like... Like five games. Yeah, and then after uh, Soap died, it's like, nope, no, nope, I'm never playing this yeah. brand ever again. <laughs> I don't like this game anymore. Yeah, man. They, they basically so just bad. refreshed everything. Like everything's the same. Nope. All right, no. <laughs> Prepare yourself next week because we are going to be getting Toy Story 4. Oh, I can't do this. It's landing in Brunei as of next week and it has a remarkably fresh Rotten Tomato score at 100%. It's a perfect fresh film. Rotten Tomato. Huh? It's, it's a perfect film. It's a perfect film. By all accounts, online reviewers are raving about it. Oh, man. They're saying if you had any doubts, which like, you know... So, uh, uh, I did. Some, I definitely you did. did I yeah. did. I was like, why do we even need this movie? And Dell justified it by saying, look, they're not going to just make a movie without conti- a story. Continuing the Toy Story franchise without having a proper story. Sure. And, and it seems like Dell is right. And this movie has been unanimously praised by everyone. I am so excited and I can't Maybe there's wait. there's like loose strings they haven't tied. So. Apparently, it closes off a couple of characters' arcs. Hmm. Are you guys uh, ready for this? Man, I'm not. I'm, I'm so not. I'm very indifferent about this because I was never a really big fan. I watched all of them, but never you weren't like a huge fan of the franchise no no i love i love toy story i wish i had more toy story toys i uh yeah i really wish i had at least buzz and moody exactly i, I, I love like the life-size toy ones. soldiers yeah. though <laughs> this toy soldiers the <laughs> the army men yeah well yeah no, no, the, the 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 one with the aliens toy, toy soldiers. soldiers yeah tommy lee jones was the voice of one of them i'm not i can't recall anyway but i enjoyed that more than the toy story ouch <laughs> Speaking of Toy Story, there is a movie coming out and it's the latest in the Child's Play franchise. Chucky's Back being voiced by Mark Hamill. They've gotten a knack for like viral marketing. Last week, we talked about a couple of posters that came out and it seemed like Chucky has taken care of Woody and Buzz. <laughs> yeah. and, and the dog, what's his name? The, the, the Sling. Sausage s- slingy dog. sausage yeah. dog, yeah. Sausage this week, dog. they had another poster come out and it seems that he has put a knife uh, right into Mr. Potato's head. <laughs> nice. It's because they're opening the same day. <laughs> they are. And the caption for that poster was amazing. Okay, you had that poster. and You don't see it very much because the knife is blurred out and you can barely make out Mr. Potato's hat. And the caption is, Mashed, bake, fried, Whatever you want, Chucky has you covered. Nice. <laughs> it would I be like funny that. if that... Because it's the same opening and then it's actually the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm on Rotten Tomatoes right now and I'm checking out the scores for the Toy Story movies. Number one is at 100%. Number two is at 100%. Number three is at 98%. And number four is at 100%. Talk about a combo breaker. <laughs> So if, if you aggregate this, this is like 99.7%. Yeah, this is probably the greatest saga ever. Yeah, it is. Right? By score. By score. Yeah. Wow. Mm. All right. That's next week. Anyway, 
Did you guys know that there's a Gladiator 2 in the works? What? Why? <laughs> Why? Russell Crowe? Is Wait. it Ridley Scott? <laughs> yes, it is Oh, Ridley could Scott. he stop? <laughs> like, you ruined Alien, Ridley. <laughs> okay, so Gladiator came out 20 years ago. All yes, right? it did. Beautiful it, movie. It yeah. was a good movie. and yeah, it, it was not bad. It closed off the arc of Maximus Decimus Meridius. Okay? Yeah. yeah. He he's died. done. He's dead. Like, yeah. he, he did what he had to do, and he, he gave the ultimate sacrifice for Rome, right? Yes. Yeah. So apparently... Right after that movie came out, they were like, let's do a sequel. And it never took off. No one touched it. Because this won every <laughs> award ever. Ridley Scott was like, I'm out of projects. Yeah. Let me revisit my greatest hits. <laughs> so apparently it's still in the very early stages. I hope it never goes through. <laughs> so you would not watch this? No. Why? It's like somebody coming up to you and going, by the way, we have a sequel to Scarface. It's like, no. <laughs> Scarface. Yeah, when he got shot, he actually like learned to stop his heart so he could live. It's like, no. <laughs> he got a bigger friend. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, Ridley, stop working. Quit. <laughs> How old is he now? He's like, he's nearing 80. Oh. Like, this is the problem, right? He's revisiting Alien. He's revisiting this. Yeah. Like, what's he going to do? A sequel to A Beautiful Mind? I don't know. You know what I love about Gladiator is that there were some movie mistakes left in the movie. Yes, yeah. Right? No, the plane in the background. There's a plane in the background. Ground, the, 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 the gas car, container. the gas tank, the gas tank yeah. in the chariot. Yeah. But very early on in the scene where they just, I think they just invaded Germania. Yeah, there's a there's, there's a key a, grip uh, no, yeah, or sound grip, sound grip, right? <laughs> and, and he's walking backwards, and you see it. And the, the thing I love about it is that they've come up with so many releases, and they just never bothered <laughs> to write the guy out. <laughs> they've never, re- yeah, they've never removed him. Oh, so good. by CG or anything. They could just <laughs> CGI the plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just just airbrush it yeah. off. <laughs> no. But what does he do? He goes and ruins Alien. <laughs> Priorities. Apparently so. Rambo 5 is coming out this year, and we just got our first trailer for that two weeks ago. It looks good. It, it does. It does look good. We're getting the new movie in September. Stallone says he's willing to keep going even after Last Blood. And oh. No, Stallone, stop. <laughs> Ridley, we had just had this conversation. <laughs> he, he's actually talking about the character of John Rambo. He's like, I, I don't mind to keep going if you guys uh, want more. No, just... <sighs> no, the whole point of this is called Last Blood. What's he gonna? Uh, what is he gonna call the sixth one? There's, the there was last blood. No, no, no. It's, it's like there was one more drop. <laughs> <laughs> the blood no, keeps no. coming. Rambo, like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> you guys have seen Creed two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know how beautifully his story ended. Yeah, I'd be so mad if there's a Creed three and he goes, I couldn't stay retired, so I came back. You know, <laughs> I get so mad. Like I said goodbye to you, man. I cried. Wow. Yeah, I'd mm. be so mad if he does number six. We'll just have to wait and see whether or not the last movie is as good as we hope it is. Yeah. If not, then may- maybe maybe one more. Just, one more. Just, one more, to, one more. just to make it, you know. Is there any news on that new Die Hard film? No. Oh, thank God. I don't think so. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh, they're supposed to do a prequel apparently yes year apparently one. so yeah. yeah year one and it's, it's gonna so be hard. a different actor it, no it's the young McLean would be somebody else yeah and then Bruce Willis it'll be like playing yeah. uh, with, with like the current timeline and then oh this is like a flashback kind of thing anyway so that's the news this week on the Y Group Podcast get in touch with us here on the show in our contact links down below and up next it's our review of Men in Black International we, we got a chance to watch the galaxy that uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, uh. When the first time the doctor put you in my arms. <laughs> Wait, that's a whole different Just song. Just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it if we try. We love you, Will, if you're listening. <laughs> we got a chance to watch this movie this week. It opened here in Brunei Cinemas and... Uh, it's currently sitting on Rotten Tomatoes with a score of 24%. Is it 24%? It's 24%. I'm, I'm looking at it yeah, right I'm, now. I'm not surprised. It, it, it was up to 35 wow. a little bit just before it opened. And then once it opened, it just went 24%, which is not far so off. So their score is in the black? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. But their score is 1% more than Dark Phoenix. Which is at 23%. That doesn't say <laughs> much, though. I will say it right now. Dark Phoenix was pretty watchable. I, I don't understand why people hated it. Anyway, Man in Black is the latest entry into the Man in Black franchise. And it's the latest attempt at a Hollywood reboot. <laughs> <laughs> we had three movies with... Oh, we did. Yeah, Will Smith. Oh, wow. And, and Josh Brolin was in the third one. In the third one, yeah. Oh my, I forgot. So the first one kicked it off and it was, by all accounts, great. 
I, yeah, I, I, I the love first that one movie. was fantastic. Second one was a little bit of a stretch. Like it was getting a bit old. Yeah, like come was. on, like give us a better storyline than this. The only thing I remember from the second one, I could be wrong, was Michael Jackson in there as a cameo. Yes, yes. right. Yeah. He's like, um, can I be Agent M? <laughs> that yeah. that is what you only remembered. Yeah, because I was like, no way, it's, it's the king. <laughs> like, it's the king of pop. The rest of the movie, you don't remember. I have zero idea what the movie's about. <laughs> really? Yeah, I only remember that video conference screen. It goes, hey, it's Agent M. I'm like, oh my God, it's Michael. And then we got the third one, which... Uh, which was a time travel film. Which was not good. No, it was not. Yeah, it was not good. But I mean, <laughs> That you remember. <laughs> it's because <laughs> we were watching it in the cinema. And I was, watch- I was with my best friend and we were watching it. And then, so this was about Will Smith's father, right? The story is about yeah, Will Smith's yeah, dad. Yeah. And it was a very hokey, tacky story. And my friend and I were like, oh, this is so tacky, so tacky. And he kept going and going and going until the part where Will Smith's father dies. Yeah, and then I was like, oh my God, this is so tacky. And then I hear sniffling coming next to me. Because your friend. My friend starts crying and goes, it's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> terrible. What are you I talking about? I still enjoyed all of three. So this movie stars two new men in black uh, agents. It's uh, Chris Hemsworth as Agent H. And Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson, who plays Molly slash Agent M. The new Agent M. Thor and Valkyrie. Yeah. yeah. Thor and Valkyrie. They had very good chemistry in mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, in Ragnarok. And it's carried over now. I, you, you can see the chemistry between them. Some. Like, when, when they Some have their, scenes, yeah. Yeah, their, their witty banter yeah. and, and their insults yeah, towards yeah. each other. But this movie, uh, if I had to give a summary, again, as usual, the MIB have to save the world from... An alien invasion. A big alien thingy. And it happened to be in France. In Paris. In Paris. And no that's one it. explained why. Okay, so I don't remember the first three, but is it just me or is this movie more focused on the world building? It is. It is, right? Yeah. Because they have more factions of MIB. Uh, MIB. Yeah, and more they, branch. And uh, they also spend more time with the aliens. Or spend more time with the aliens? Is that something? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Because previously in the other movies, it, it was always like a hide and seek cat and mouse thing. So the aliens were there, but they weren't so obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was only if they revealed themselves. But this movie sort of throws that away and goes like, look, so many more aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't see any hiding aliens. We don't see any, no. you know, the whole one alien Wait, sitting was, inside the head mm, of a guy. The, the, the beard. Yeah, but, yeah. but everyone could see that. I mean, you could, but it's hiding. I guess it's not a foolproof story. Yeah. Tessa Thompson plays Molly, who was a little girl, and she had an encounter with a very small alien. (laughs) And her parents were neuralized, but she wasn't. So she remembers everything, and she spent her whole life trying to find the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, she applied to the FBI, the CIA. She's an excellent student, and she's gone through all the courses. She's got weapons training. Even though she's offered, like, the the privilege of like CIA. check the box of which department you want to be and she says no I, I, I want this box the drop, the box that I drew yeah which is and we all know what you're talking uh, about like, you know what yeah, yeah you, you know Finance. what I want so and then she ends up working like a call center mm. but tracking alien activity and yeah she, and it's she, about this point where I started to check out mentally <laughs> uh, so she hacked into NASA as a professor emeritus I think and she was keeping track on star activity and she tracked an alien who came to Earth to see his kids because she read about it on a tabloid paper. Yeah, we That's never right. got an ending for that. No. Like, yeah. did Dave actually see his kids? Like, what happened? But that's <laughs> that, that's a callback to the first movie where you have Tom Lee Jones going like, you know, always read the tabloids. This, this is the right. best Right. So, see, yeah. this is something I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and then she found MIB and out of convenience, Emma Thompson runs uh, MIB a- Global. Agent O. Agent O. Mm. Uh, and she runs MIB Global. She is obviously impressed by this spunky little character. And she goes, I'll hire you. And she joins the mission in London because Emma Thompson said there's something going wrong in London. She gets assigned to a case. Chris Hemsworth's character is supposed to protect some royal alien noble. Vengas. Yeah. Vengas? Venga. Venga. Something. <laughs> something like that, yeah. Yeah, see, the names, there's so many names in this one, but none of them really sticks out. Until you meet Pawnee, which is my favorite character. <laughs> Yeah, and voiced by Kunal Nianjani. Yeah, and uh, he was amazing. He's amazing. He's a stand-up comedian. He's an American Pakistani. Okay, let let's just go for a full spoiler, spoiler review, review. because everything that you need to know is in the trailer. That's True. the kind of movie that you can expect if you've seen the trailer. Now, moving to spoilers. So, spoiler alert. I didn't have many big problems with the movie personally. I, I thought it was watchable and it was funny where it had to be. Although, what I will say is that I don't think. Chris Hemsworth fits the role of a man in black. Yeah. He's usually charismatic. I just didn't feel like he was charismatic in this one. It didn't seem that way. No, because Will Smith 
became a sensation with that first one. Yeah. And if you watch it now, and they still play it on like HBO or whatever, and you still go like, man, I can't believe Will Smith was just what? Shy of 30, I think, uh, when he made this film. It was amazing. He was fresh off the heels of Independence Day. And he was yeah. fresh off Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yep. Uh, and you, he just steals every scene. But with this one... I felt myself more interested in Tessa Thompson. Correct. Same. Uh, exactly what I was going to yeah, say. I was, yeah, I really felt that she was the... Oh, she... Chris Hemsworth basically brought Thor. Thor. Yeah. It was like, ah, oh, we're just partying. It's not a problem. You know, I was like, really? Yeah. Like, like, it's so... Yeah, I was disappointed in that. And not to mention, the plot is razor thin. Like, this is barely a plot. The biggest complaint for me for Chris Hemsworth is that Will Smith was cool and overconfident, right? Yeah. Which which is where the humor came from. Like, yeah, yeah. no, I, I know what this is. And then like, oh, no, it's got me. And he's being thrown around by an alien. Yeah, yeah. And he had the cricket to work with. Exactly. The little gun. Chris Hemsworth is just goofy in this. Yeah. And I fe- so I've not seen Ghostbusters 2K16. But I feel like it's like the same kind of dumb male kind yeah, of character. Yeah. Like too hot for his own good kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, obviously, it was played for laughs when he was talking to the gangster alien in the beginning. Yeah. And you told me he's called Luca Brazzi, which yep. is a Godfather reference. Exactly. And Luca Brazzi's uh, female companion was like, if you want to do anything. And then they end up yeah. uh, uh, having an intimate scene together. And I was like, oh, so, yeah, okay, he's an attractive man. But, but is that it, all he's going to be? Is this cross-species now? Yeah, so... <laughs> Ah, uh, something just felt wrong. And obviously, like, Kumal Nanjiani's character, well, the little alien, was fun. But by the time that final reveal came in, which is where Chris Hemsworth's ex-lover was the villain, yeah. had no weight because we never met her. Like We, we just heard about her. Yeah. Like, oh, she's the arms dealer. Oh, she's your ex? Oh, yeah. no. You know, she's like, that great. I mean, pretty. Uh, I don't find her pretty. Uh, uh, like that wasn't character. even yeah, yeah. Th- that wasn't my thing was like you can't give us a twist about a character we've never seen right that's mm. how that's not how twists work and mm. the island of death what island of death really really death or something yeah yeah the yeah. fortress of death something yeah, like, yeah. It, didn't, it didn't even look like it was yeah so <laughs> it looked too nice yeah uh, it's and then obviously the biggest twist in this is that Liam Neeson's character was taken over by the alien entity that's the hive the hive yeah and that Agent H was actually neuralized in the beginning of the film. I actually thought he was, he wanted to say his name was Agent H for Hemsworth. Oh. <laughs> he what ended was up it? saying H- Horatio. 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 Oh. <laughs> no, no, it's Henry. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know. So, you know, the biggest twist being Liam Neeson's character is the bad guy. And again, you saw it from a mile away. Yep, I, I saw it right from the beginning. I was oh, like, did you? Something's off about Liam Neeson. Right. Because I don't he, know, I, th- I actually thought C was... Yeah, okay, there's a supporting character called Agent C who's like this pedantic, tricky, uh, yeah. you know, British the, the agent brains. who's like, no, 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 yeah. no, stop defending him, you know, I know that something's going wrong, da 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 It just always seemed like Liam Neeson's character, High T. Yeah, oh, that's such a bad name. Such a bad name. <laughs> uh, and, and it's High with a letter T, H-I-G-H-T. Yeah. He's always defending Chris Hemsworth, he's always giving him breaks, and... There was that period of time where I'm like, okay, maybe he's on Chris Hemsworth's side. But then right after that sequence in yeah. Marrakesh, you're like, hang on a minute. Nah, it can't be that easy. Yeah, so I think the the problem with this movie is that it took a lot of standard plot elements from other action movies, like The Angry Lover, you know, a boss, and it just doesn't work in the MIB world. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because it's not quirky enough. It's not complex enough. Yes. If, if we're going to poke at this, I'm going to say this. The plot from the first movie was very unexpected. It really was. Like, the universe is in Orion's belt. I'm like, what, is that, what does that mean? And you have, yeah. you have so many different factions oh, of aliens so good. looking for this thing. Yeah. And then you had great supporting characters like, what's her name? Uh, Linda Fiorentino. Yeah. Who plays like this deadpan doctor. And she's like, yeah, okay, fine. And it's only something that could have come out in the 90s when film was a bit experimental with the franchises. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to say before we, I don't know, we, I guess we can wrap this movie up. There's not much to talk about yeah. because even if you try and boil down the characters to find out what their essence is. No, and then like the setups are like, you know, so Tessa Thompson's character Molly meets a Tarantia as a kid. It's an alien. It's a little blue puffy like alien. A cute little thing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's basically like an evil Sonic the Hedgehog, I suppose. <laughs> I think you're thinking more along the lines of uh, an evil Sonic the Hedgehog and now it's cute. So you have a gizmo situation. Yes, here going, yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And then, you know, um, Chris Hemsworth's character is about to enter the Fortress of Death. There is a similar alien who's all grown up. And whoop de doo it's the same alien that Tessa Thompson saw They didn't as a kid. even try to hide it from us. Yeah. No, no. It it's, 
And it's man, it's just so much convenience in the story. It's just weird. and then the movie ends right there. Yeah, on that island. Ah, uh, no, no, it ended with uh, on at the Eiffel Tower as it began. Well, pretty much. When I say end, I mean as in for me, like that's it. You know what's coming up next, right? Like, right. Yeah. Because they explain it to you beat for beat from then on. Yeah. It's like wait, oh, he took the weapon. Oh, it's not there. Oh, and look, it's not in the case. These were yeah. all things that you could call yeah. out. So so for me, the movie ended on that island. I'm like, all right. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a lot of convenience with this movie, and uh, I don't know. I just lazy writing. Yeah, lazy writing, and I understand why the critics. I mean, I fell asleep. Yeah, I you, almost. You fell asleep. asleep. I, fell asleep. I actually asked myself, "Is this a good part for me to just shut my eye for a bit?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep because I was like, "Okay, I don't think it's gonna get any better." So when I woke up, I was like, "Ah, it's not any better." Except for whenever, whenever Pony, Pony came on the screen, he's so good. <laughs> He's a good character. He's, um, my queen, he says. <laughs> yeah, my queen, he said this, this, this idiot. Says. <laughs> so good. <laughs> the vehicles were not cool. The guns no, were no, not they cool. Weren't, they weren't because you know in the first one they fired cricket. Yeah, and Agent K just blast got blasted at to the end of the room. Jay, yeah. As it was, sorry, Jay. Yeah. yeah, he got blasted to the end of the room, and I thought that was hilarious. I guess you have these two characters. Yes, the chemistry is good, but like like I said, I don't think it's good for a Men in Black movie. No, no. Because two actors, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, and they work so well. So good. One is so serious and deadpan, and one is just like this young punk kid. Yeah. And he's like, I'm too cool for school kind of thing. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah. yeah. And, and something I guess they were trying to replicate, maybe, but it fell flat for me uh, with regards to that. All right, let's give our ratings for Men in Black International. TB. I thought it was better than Dark Phoenix, so it's 6.10 out of... 6.10. That's a 7. 6 out of 10. <laughs> 6 out Someone, of 10. Someone's had a lot of food today. Yeah. 6 out of 10 um, flying cars. Cool. Flying Lexuses. Yes. All right. Kai. Okay, so I'm going to give it 4 ponies out of 10. Ah, oh, only 4? Oh, only 4 ponies? Yeah, because it's only 4 ponies. <laughs> My queen! <laughs> I kind of dropped an album. <laughs> and everyone's dead in that yeah, scene. It's so good. Oh. I'm going to give this movie, I, I guess I'll give it a 5.5 agents out of 10. Mm. It, it was not a great movie by any measure, but it is still fun. Like I, I was in the theater and I was laughing. TV, watch, TV. Yeah, watch yeah. on HBO kind of thing. Yeah, it's another one of those. Or if you could rent it online. Or if you could rent it online, yeah, yeah, do that. So that's our review of Men in Black International. Do check it out as it is still showing in local cinemas. But, you know, as like we said, maybe wait for it. Who knows? Up next, it's the other segment (laughs) in our podcast, which is. Yep, that's right, it's Upper Liat Liat and it's what else we've been watching this week. TV Upper Liat Liat. I've been watching this Korean series called Memoirs of Alhambra. It's a weird uh, story. It's a story about this kid who developed a VR game and he wants to sell this game to this tech company who developed a very high-tech contact lenses. Okay. So when you, whenever you wear these contact lenses, you're in this game and then everything comes to life. Because that's all you see? Yeah. Or is it augmented reality? Augmented, yeah, oh, okay, augmented okay. reality, okay. AR game. So, so like if you see a statue and then it comes to life and then it tries to fight you, you beat the statue, you level up. But the thing is, the guy who owns this tech company couldn't find the this game developer he's somewhat missing so he ends up playing this game trying to find that game developer okay. so it sounds a bit like ready player one it kind of but ready player one stays still ah this guy has to walk to this cafe to get this oh, sword right, because he's right. seeing extra yeah, things yeah. in the he, game he has to he whenever he keeps dying he keeps going to this cafe to get the sword is over it, is, and it over an, again. is it on netflix it's on netflix uh, i'll check it out yeah mm-hmm. all right kai apa lelet what's come out since godzilla Dark Phoenix. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was quite good. I yeah, you that. gave a, your score to him. Yeah, six, yeah. Ten, six out of ten. Yeah. Still have not seen Aladdin. And the- <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't want to see Aladdin? I just, I just don't have enough time. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've sure. seen everything else. <laughs> I even watched Except like the you watched the hustle. Uh, I did, yeah. No, it was, that was not bad. <laughs> Life of Pets too. <laughs> oh, so good. Dogs, dogs, purpose, so good. <laughs> but no time for nothing. Uh, no, I've been, uh, I've not been able to watch anything new lately. But I am planning to do a Toy Story marathon before Part Four comes. Ah, out. yes. That's Preparing right. for next week. 
Yeah, we're preparing for. I'm preparing for next week. You are preparing for next week. Okay, moving on to me. Guess what, guys? I checked out the first episode of Swamp Thing. Oh, <laughs> how is it? It was actually okay. Right, right. Okay, that's good. And then there's an episode two and three that just dropped. The last couple of weeks. Yeah, I th- no, I think it was sometime this week. Okay, nice. Didn't it got cancelled? It got cancelled. Uh, so it's going to be one season only. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they, they had sh- they've shot ep- season one. They're editing it. But there's no season two. Yeah. Uh, mm. Which is a shame because Swamp Thing is one of my favorite comic book characters ever. And the effects were good, I guess, for a TV uh, adaptation of this. Nice. Um, it's directed by James Wan. Like he's the one that's that. Did he direct his, it? I think he's re- producing it. He's and, producing and it. running it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it he's involved in the production of this. Yeah, yeah. And there are many conflicting stories as to why it was cancelled. There was something about like a tax break. That yeah. They so were, that's the truth. Oh, so they were. So the state of uh, I believe Louisiana where yeah, they shot. They were banking on the tax break, which would end up being forty million dollars, like half of the whole budget, right? Yeah, and then the only tax break came to about sixteen. Yeah, so they were shot. Yeah, and then uh. they they and they couldn't. They're like, no, it doesn't make sense to shoot this, which so, is a shame because uh, Doom Patrol, which debuted on DC Universe as well, uh, has, has gotten rave reviews. So yeah, I am very. Is it out? Doom, Doom Patrol Doom. is done, and it's gotten rave reviews, and I plan to watch that. I also plan to get into Swamp Thing. It's yeah, it looks amazing. You should check it out. I, okay. I I was impressed with the first episode. I'm like, this is actually really good for TV. Nice. All right, so that's the episode this week on the Wanker Podcast. We're all very tired and sleepy today. <laughs> yeah. Next week, Toy Story Four. Oof. Get ready. Bring I your tissues. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could. I'm just saying it now. Sure. <laughs> but you I want to see Kai crying. Yeah. On, on, on we have to watch that together. Yeah, we have to. Watch. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna cry. I he he, you. he wants to watch it on. Yeah, I want to watch it the first when, day. When is it coming out? Uh, I believe Wednesday evening. Ah, we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh so you're working? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, do join us next week for our review of Toy Story. From uh, me, Kev, I'd like to thank uh, Tibby and Kai for joining me on this episode of the podcast. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>